Coach, uh, first things first, just kind of looking back at the game tape uh, yesterday and today, uh, what's kind of maybe stood out, maybe a, a player or two that has kind of jumped off the film? Well, I think the biggest thing is when you really when you really watched it, and a little echo over there, sorry, it's okay. When you really watched it, I thought Cam, you know, probably navigated some traffic better than I thought he did and kept us alive in some plays and some moments um, that, uh, you know, kind of made some good things, keeping things down the field, and he made some plays with his feet, right? Just that escapability, you know, not run ability, but escapability that I think he's brought to our offense. And I thought him and the receivers were just a little bit more on sync off script. And I think that's when quarterbacks go from good to great is when you have the ability to play some things off script. Um, but we left some things out there. And it starts with taking care of the football, right? And that's something that we've harped on a, a ton uh, over the last few weeks in the fall camp. And we didn't do a better job of that, you know, because we're doing a good job of taking it away. But we're still breaking even in that turnover margin category. And, you know, I think defensively they continue to play really, really hard. And, uh, you know, we're rotating a lot of guys in there. We're getting a lot of production from a lot of people. And uh, it's really good to see. And, uh, you know, just our offense jumping out the gate like that and scoring four straight possessions was huge for this uh, team and huge for some momentum. And, and they've got to see this morning some places where they can improve. Notice there's a handful of guys in the second half, especially on offense. Uh, Lincoln, Nakia, uh, didn't maybe take a ton of snaps. Was that just trying to get some other guys some, some rotation to kind of keep them fresh for this week? I mean, we're doing what we did in the moment to, to win that football game. And, uh, you know, we want to see Jalen out there. I want to see what he's capable of doing. Because I think in some of those situations, we get Jalen in space. I mean, he's really hard to tackle and he can hit a home run. So it wasn't just as much them as some guys that we wanted to see. Robbie was back and we, we wanted to get him to his threshold too. And it just adds to competition and it keeps guys hungry and, and ready to go. So I wouldn't read too much into it other than, you know, we put the guys out there that we feel like we wanted to to get, get looks at in certain situations. Update on Renard, Jay Lee, and uh, Travion for this week? <sighs> My training meetings after this, it's, uh, it's unfortunate for you guys, but uh, we'll have those updates as we go throughout the week. Just on Oregon, what you know about them so far in Phil, and what, what do they kind of pride themselves on this year? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge Oregon on the Georgia game. Georgia's on another planet. Okay, they just are when you watch that team play. And they've improved each and every week. I thought they had a great bounce back week, uh, week two. I mean, I, to score 70 points, I don't care who you're playing. And I have a lot of respect for Eastern Washington. And then to have BYU come in there, who is a big physical football team that we got to see firsthand last year, uh, it's impressive. You know, they're, they're big at the line of scrimmage. They're physical, they're long, they're tough. And then they surround it with a bunch of speed on the perimeter, right? They added the quarterback. Uh, who has tons of game volume, and I think he does a really good job, and he's a great athlete. So um, similar scheme offensively to us. Uh, you know, a lot of formations and movements. You go back uh, throughout the coordinator's history, even at Florida State, they do a lot of different things, and they've been known for defense really, you know, since I've been here the last three years, and, and the personnel matches the style that they want to play. So uh, impressive football team, and it'll be a tremendous challenge that uh, we got to get ready for this week. The O line hasn't hasn't given up a sack this year over there. Uh, are they taking advantage of a lot of quick game stuff, or is that just you know playing just good protection, giving them time? Both. I mean, I I swear when I watched the film last night and this morning, like some of these offensive linemen I've seen the last three years, and these guys hasn't graduated. So they they've played a lot of games. They've actually had a lot of different pieces in and out of the lineup through three games up front. But uh, yeah, a lot of short, intermediate quicks when they plan to take their shots down the field, they get a lot of max protection. Uh, so it's uh, getting the ball out of his hands, but it's also a quarterback that's confident in the scheme and knows where he wants to go and they're giving him some clean reads and he's getting the ball out and letting their playmakers make plays in space. So definitely a combination, but even a stat I didn't know, but uh, you know they've been keeping him clean and, and I, I think it's a combination of how good they are and, and what they're trying to do offensively. Dan obviously off to you know starring earlier this season. I don't know if you saw it. Top graded linebacker in the country right now, PFF, Pac-12 Player of the Week, Reese's Player of the Week. It just it, what's he shown you on film and is just the kind of dynamic playing style so far. Well, I think he showed maturity, you know, and I think that's an important piece of it as he continues his growth of playing the position. And that was our biggest sell when we brought him here. It's like, Dayon, come here and do the same things you did last year. So you're not restarting. So you can grow with the same person that, that you've done it with. So uh, I've seen a lot of maturity, but there's a lot of playmaking. But he's playing more linebacker. Okay, You watch his tape of Nevada when we first watched it. He's just playing old school football, tackle the ball. 
Okay, now you're seeing him play linebacker with technique, his hands, his blitzing abilities off the charts. And when you continue to find ways to get him on one on one matchups, right? Because I feel whether it's an offensive lineman, tight end, tailback, I mean, he one on one, he's hard to take care of. So I uh, think uh, defensively, he's done a good job of putting him in positive situations, but he put in the work. I mean, he's gained 25 pounds since he's been here. And uh, you know, his speed and athleticism is matching what we all thought he could be. So the time of possession, Coach, I know you, you run an up-tempo offense, but against Idaho, it was 36-24, to 24, Wisconsin was 38-22, to 22, and Colorado State was 33-27. to 27. Is there more of a focus on time of possession going against Oregon or going against conference teams? We're going to play a certain style, and I know that's weird coming from a defensive guy, right? I know that's what everyone pegs me as, but, uh, you know, I, I like the tempo that I saw on Saturday. We need it. We need to get explosive plays and get rolling and get people off script and schedule and making them play fast. So I'm comfortable with that. Uh, it's not the tempo that's the, that's the time of possession issue. It's the, you know, quick series we've had. You know, we've had a number of three and outs, okay? Or, you know, time of possession is what it is. Defensively against Wisconsin, we couldn't get off the field, right? They converted third and 17, third and 14. So stats, especially three games in, are stats. Um, that's why I don't look a ton into it. Um, but those, there's a lot of reasons that those things are happening, not just because we want to play with a little bit more pace. And the offense uh, looked a little bit worse in the second half against Colorado State. Was that taking your foot off the gas a little bit, or was, was there a specific? No, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in taking foot off the gas. And you know, there's a maturity level to it, and there's a standard that we want to play. And we didn't necessarily meet that standard in the second half. Okay, so I think as a team, and I'm not just going to point out the offense as a team. I think we've learned a lot from from what we need to do to play a 60-minute football game, right? And that's every man's job, but it's also the urgency of what you need to do play in and play out. And, uh, you know, so we didn't finish in the red zone in the second half. That was big. Uh, we had two, you know, turnovers ourselves, or, uh, or one at the end of the first half and one in the second half. So, you know, those are things that we need to clean up, and that's what we addressed this morning. And Oregon ranked 15th right today. Uh, and Bo Nix is their quarterback, obviously, like the – how, how, how can you stop Bo Nix? What do you see on the film? What popped for me with uh, their quarterback is athleticism, you know, and it isn't that they have schemes that, that he runs, but he keeps the play alive and then he runs very effectively, and he's a red zone threat. I think he had three rushing touchdowns last week that were really, really big for that team. And uh, But the experience, you can't replicate it. So they did a good job in the portal upgrading that position, and uh, – you know, he really has command of their offense, and I think he's got the full keys to the car. And, you know, you don't see them trying to handicap an ability. He's out there throwing deep balls, short balls, intermediate balls. Um, so I, I see a quality football player that's really helped their football team. Uh, Oregon student section made national news this past week for some unfortunate reasons. What can Zoo Crew do to, whether conduct or in general, to support your football team and the values of your football team? Well, I think it's a good question. First off, I mean, you know, not, you know, what, what, what happened at the Oregon Stadium is, is not okay. You know, and we got a lot of guys of Mormon faith on our football team, uh, as does Coach Lanning, and I know he's probably disappointed in that. And, uh, you know, we support and, and we don't, uh, you know, we, we make sure that guys understand that they're going to be supported and protected here, and we're going to take care of them. Uh, so I think that's important. And I advise all of our fans, come, compete, be loud, be appropriate. Right, and I think uh, our fan base since I've been here has always been that way. Uh, they've been completely supportive, and uh, you know, like I said, I I saw on Saturday when they were in the red zone, they went from false start to a miss snap, uh, you know, uh, big negative play because of how loud our student section was. So I'm excited for them to come out and be positive and have a, a difference in this football game because I know this is, is going to be a, a ruckus environment. It's going to be a packed house. You know, I just heard there's, there's just about a thousand tickets left and we want those filled with crimson and gray. And we're excited about what our people are going to come out and the energy that they're going to provide this stadium. And uh, I couldn't be more happier with the response of Coug Nation and, and what our fans are going to bring to this football game. Awesome. And Jaden Hicks um, really had an awesome game on Saturday. What are your what are your expectations and plans for him going forward? Well, I think Jaden um, has always had a high ceiling. And I, it's fun because I've gotten a chance to see it the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, so for those guys to, to do that is, you know, for Jaden to do that, I think is really, really important. And it grows his confidence, right? He's been in about 30 to 40 plays each of the first couple of games to play 70 plays. And to show what he can do over the course of that time, I thought was, was great. 
you know, so really important for his success, his maturity and his mindset as he really goes into the next phase of the game. And uh, I think sky's the limit for Jaden. I think we felt that really the last couple of years. And uh, Dan Henley, in addition to playing extre at an extremely high level, um, also speaks really well with the media. How does that, how does his voice translate to the locker room and how does he show leadership to his teammates? I think getting to know Dayon, I mean, part of his deal, he loves that fun. You know, football, he doesn't work football, he plays football. And football is fun to him. And it should be to a lot of our guys. Because you invest so much of yourself into it that, you know, why not enjoy yourself when you're out there? And I think, you know, you get little glimpses of who these guys really are. Right? And that's not a show for Dayon, right? That's who he really is. He's fun, he's energetic, and he likes to be a little bit playful. But when it's time to work, Dayon works, right? And I think that's an important distinction, you know, for people to understand that it's, he's not like that on the field. He's focused on what he needs to do to be his best. So uh, it's part of Dayon. It's fun for everybody to see a little bit of that. But uh, like I said, he's been as advertised, and I'm excited about how he's maturing too and, and his leadership ability and how he handled last week. There's a lot of emotions in that game for him. And uh, he went out there and played well and represented him and his family to a, to a high degree. Coach, uh, the latest AP Top 25 came out yesterday. Um, you guys receiving votes, close to cracking, but not making it. Is that something that you guys in the locker room, you kind of pay attention to or, or not at all? Well, I think the biggest thing for me personally, if I, it's full disclosure, I don't even know why they rank anybody until week five. You know, until you get into your conference play and, and you really know who everybody is. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave that for everybody else to talk about. You know, we, we control what we can control. Uh, I didn't talk about it this morning meeting. I won't talk about it at this afternoon's meeting. We just got to do what we need to do. There's two rankings that I want to be ranked at, okay? The, the one going into the final week and at the end of the season. Everything else is just let it all play out. There's a lot of games to be played. It's, you know, it's all sorts of things, you know, but I know I stand by our schedule uh, and how we played and where we're at sitting right now. And, you know, there's potential to play five ranked Pac-12 teams as we go throughout the season. So uh, it, it can be a daunting task if you look at it that way, but we're looking at it one at a time. And, uh, you know, if we stack a bunch of one and O's, we'll get the results we want. We're not worried about that. Uh, obviously, you talk about it a little bit, but heading into Pac-12 play here, just how do you feel about where the team's at right now about to begin conference play? I think in a great place. You know, like I said, they've worked their tails off to get here, and they've earned it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're confident in what we need to do. I, I think you know a lot about your team after three weeks, and we've been challenged. Uh, so, you know, I think they should be confident. And they're confident in each other, and I think they're buying into what we really want them to do. So... Uh, it's a process, and, and this is a great opponent coming in here this weekend. You know, and I think Oregon has a rich history of playing well, but uh, we also have a rich history of playing them really well. You know, so it's going to be a competitive game that I think our guys understand the moment. They understand the challenge. Now it's going to be in our preparation of what each, each person needs to do to make sure that we're at peak, uh, you know, peak position on Saturday. Got to ask uh, just your thoughts on Jalen Watson, 99-yard pick six last Thursday. I'm sure that one made you happy. No, oh, it made me completely happy. I I'm so proud of Jalen. And, uh, you know, as, as all the NFL scouts would come around, I would say, like I said, he's just – he's an unpolished diamond. It's in there, right? Keep polishing. Keep working. Take a chance on him. Um, and I was just happy because I, I, I texted him how proud I was of him. And, uh, you know, he's, he he's handling it the right way, and he's going to get a lot more opportunities and just really proud of the way he's played. Shaw Smith Wade right now is the top graded corner in Pac-12. Are you grading all these guys? Is that where you're getting all these grades stuff, from? Uh, these they grade stuff. No, they're okay. apparently experts. Okay. Uh, and okay. So I guess we'll follow the, a lot of talk about the defensive front, obviously. Yeah. But how would you assess just how the secondaries played these first three weeks? Well, let's start with Shaw. I mean, Shaw has really matured from last year, and he's been very consistent, right? You've always seen some highs and you've seen some lows. Now we've been able to see a ton of highs, and, and people have challenged him down the field. And, and sometimes those ratings come from – playmaking and he's had opportunities to go make some plays and he's done that and uh, tackling at a high consistent level and playing bigger than what he's listed at okay and I'm not sure what he listed at I know his actual height right so he's playing bigger than that and uh, you know we kind of always knew the the structure of the defense obviously D-line know where we're at we felt great at linebacker we feel really solid about where we can be at with D-Lang and Shaw and Cam and Chris and then it was just those interior guys, right? So Armani's a staple. And if we get the safety playing at a high level, we felt like we could take another step forward. So, so far they have did it. Um, you know, last week's test was, was high to control the explosive play. And, 
you know, I think we've done a good job of even containing runs and any breakout runs. So as a whole, you know, defense top to bottom, I think they've been playing well together and complimentary football. There's a big group of Coug fans right now that are trying to come up with a nickname for your guys' defense just based on its identity and playing style and everything. I, how would you, you know, sort of sum up the, the, the identity of this team? Maybe, you know, give them some help on trying to figure oh, out a man. nickname. I'm not, I'm not a nickname guy. I don't know if I'm very creative. Uh, I'm a big fan that nicknames come from after the season, right? So let's get to that point, and then we'll start worrying about what we want to name these guys. But, uh, you know, just like I said, there's a style and a way that they play that I think you see it and you feel it when you're out there, right? So it isn't me talking about it. I think when you come watch them play, that I think it's something that everyone feels. And even better when you see them on the practice field, there's a – camaraderie and a connection that I think that's hard to put into words. So excited about their start, and they'll need to continue to play this way if, if we want to be successful as a team. When you're heading in the play coach, Dan Lanning, who obviously was a defensive coordinator of Georgia, the historically great defense last year. What do you expect to see from him and his game plan defensively? Well, I think he does a good job of mixing up a lot of looks. I mean, they've been three down, they've been four down. Uh, their, their coverage and disguises, have, you know, I think are really, really good. And you know, they're just doing things at a high level and they're doing it with, a, you know, elite talent and elite speed. So, you know, Coach Landing, I have a lot of respect for him and what he's done throughout his career. And, uh, you know, he's he's won, you know, in the national championship at this level is, is incredible. So uh, their defense will be ready. It's still really the staple of their team. And, uh, you know, it's physical. It's really physical. So I, I think he'll, he'll be ready for the challenge of what we present to him. And, uh, you know, it's excited to kind of compete in that chess match game that we'll go through on Saturday.